I still remember when we came here for an interview and the school principal was asking my son, she asked, what is, can you tell us what is your other reason for joining the school? And my son, you know, he said, he said because the school is so big, so I can practice my running skill. <laughs> uh, that was so funny. So me and the principal, we just laughed. That was years ago. And, you know, years passed. I still remember when I was uh, in his age, uh, my English teacher asking me, he said, Genty, what do you want uh, after high school? I said, I want to go to tourism school. I want to travel. I want to see the world. And hopefully, I can change the world. And I did. I did went to college and I did travel and I did live in seven different countries uh, due to work and family. But did I manage to change the world? I don't think so. I, I did do a lot of photo taking though. So when I came back and my grandma was saying, oh my God, you have been traveling so much and all you got is just photos? Of course, back then, there wasn't any social media where I can post it my photos, so... So, um, there is the one talk that I listened to from a uh, renowned um, Master Jen Nathan. He was saying that uh, in the school, actually, we need more of the happy teachers. Uh, and he was asking us, why? He said, because happy teachers will change the world. You know, happy teachers will make a better place for the students. And at the end of his talk, he said, actually, it's not only happy teachers. We also need happy parents because parents are teachers at home and happy parents will change the world. Um, and then I was thinking, you know, after I listened to that talk, I was like, hmm, happy parents change the world, really? I mean, well, I was like, I can't believe that myself. But then he, he ended it with mindfulness. Mindfulness can help happy parents to change the world. What is mindfulness, actually? They did a study about the impact of mindfulness to children. Uh, 780 children in a duration of six weeks. And they saw with mindfulness, there is an uh, increase of uh, children ability to pay attention and to self-care and participate in class and more compassion. Uh, the children are able to show uh, care for others. So what is mindfulness? According to Dr. John Kabat-Zinn, professor of medicine emeritus at University of Massachusetts, he explained that mindfulness is paying attention in a particular way on purpose in the present moment and non-judgmentally. Have we ever realized that nowadays, we tend to judge a lot. We saw one thing which is we are not happy about and then we start making a adjustment in our memory, like what's going on and why? So many things. So uh, to explain in simple words, uh, mindfulness is about uh, living in the present moment. You know, uh, how do we differentiate between the past, the present, and the future is through our breathing, you know. As we breathe in, do it together. We breathe in, we breathe out. That's the present. Okay, uh, sometimes we worry about, uh, we worry too much about the past, but the past is already gone. And then sometimes we also worry about the future. The future is not yet coming. So, how popular is mindfulness? If we Google mindfulness uh, you know, in the search engine, we'll find any kind of definition. And there are many uh, proven uh, methods also that uh, saying mindfulness practice has been able to treat many ailments, including chronic pain, anxiety, work, family, and emotional distress. So how is that possible? This is valid, yeah? Because the source is from uh, University of Massachusetts Medical School Center of, for Mindfulness. So, have you been practicing mindfulness? 
Um, anyone know about mindfulness? No? What comes in mind when you heard of the words? All right, there are three things, uh, three methods that I, I, I can suggest we can do uh, every day. Uh, you know, sometimes our life is so hectic and so stressful and so, you know, so much pressure that uh, we don't have energy to do anything else. But there are three things that we always do every day. is sit, right? You all are sitting now, right? And we walk and we eat, right? But have you been able to sit just for the sake of sitting? Most of the time while we sit, our mind wander. You know, the, the, fastest, the fastest way to travel is through our mind. Because one second we could be here, the next second we could be in New York City. Or we could be in London. It's, you know, it's really fast. And sometimes our mind could drive us crazy because, you know, the rhyme is so fast. So what we can do is uh, we sit and we focus off our breathing. We breathe in, we breathe out. Okay, the next practice we can do is walking. You know, uh, we can walk just as we're walking. We focus on our foot touching the earth instead of our, you know, walking and looking at your phone. That happens too, right? So, and enjoy as we walk because we can see the green trees, we can see the flowers, or we can say hello to our friends. There are many things we can do as we walk and we enjoy the breathing. And the third one is eating. Um, I, I noticed that uh, sometimes uh, we eat while we are looking at our phone. I even went to a restaurant, you know, when I saw a mom, dad, and two kids. They sit in one table, the food is not yet coming, so they are waiting and they all play with their phone instead of talking to each other. So this might be one, uh, one thing that drives one restaurant who gave a 10% discount to the customer provided that if you deposit your phone to the cashier. So after you finish your meal, you can collect your phone and you got the 10% discount. This is how unmindful we are with our food. You know, actually food is the gift for us, but sometimes we, we just eat for the sake of eating, and we like to finish everything really fast so we can go to the next job. And sometimes we even forgot to appreciate how delicious our food is. Okay, so these three simple practices, we can do it every day. We can sit while enjoying our bread. We can walk and we can eat. Try to eat slowly and appreciate how delicious our foods are. Okay, so do you want to practice mindfulness? Yes. Yeah, have you ever been in a condition where you, you are feel so much stress, so much pressure that you really want to blow up? Yes. yes, you do? Especially during exam? Yes. Okay, to end this, I would... Uh, share with you a few of the things that I have done as a parent and how I benefit from the mindfulness training I have. When my, uh, when my son was three years old and I was working from home, and I was working on my laptop, and then I went to the kitchen to grab something to, to eat. When I came back, my son was playing with my laptop, and he saw me and he was so scared, and then he jumped. He tried to run away, but what he did uh, unconsciously was he pulled the laptop cord with him. So when I came back, what I saw was like my laptop crash. You know, I was so angry to see my laptop crash, and my three years old son was like looking at me, and he was so scared of me. You know, maybe that time I I asked him, he didn't remember, but may, I can imagine maybe I was looking like a monster that time. Uh, and and at, at that precious second was very quick happening and I make a decision, you know, even though I was so sorry about my laptop, but I looking at my son's uh, eyes, I decided to give in a hug. 
I say, it's okay, uh, it's okay, we let go of, I'll let go of my laptop. I, I realized one thing that uh, that precious seconds is the, uh, is the result of my training. Like, uh, instead of venting my anger at my son, you know, I decided to love him. Um, you know, sometimes as parents, we could be facing a lot of things with our uh, children, and sometimes we lost our patience because we are so caught up in wanting to get things done. And sometimes our children actually slow us down with their sometimes many requests and demands and things. And the easiest thing for us to do is just to yell at them or be angry at them. And um, my mindfulness practice did, uh, taught, did teach me to be uh, more patient. I'm working on it, okay? Because my son is listening to me. <laughs> oh, I'm working on it, but it helps me. Um, when things get stressful for me, and before I react, I try to slow down. I try to stop for a moment. And that moment, that mindfulness moment when I took my breath, the rule of thumb is to do it three times, you know. When you are angry, you, take, you breathe in, you breathe out. You breathe in, you breathe out. Then for one last time, you breathe in, you breathe out, and your anger subsides. Try this at home. Thank you for listening.